In this lesson, we'll learn about dome light. Dome light is often used for image-based lighting or IBL. In this popular lighting method, you take a high dynamic range image or an HDRI and use it as your light source. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, the ultimate introduction to Redshift for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 14 plus hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Redshift for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. So when you create a dome light, you basically get a virtual spherical or hemispherical light source around your entire scene. Then you assign a 360 degrees HDRI image to that sphere or hemisphere, and you would get a nice, beautiful lighting, which is based off of the color and intensity information from that texture that you have assigned to your dome light. If I start IPR, right now you notice because we don't have any light source in the scene and the default light is disabled in the render settings as well. And I think this option should be disabled by default. We get a dark render. Now let's add a dome light from the Redshift menu. Always remember that the dome light encompasses the entire scene. By default, we get a simple white virtual sphere around our scene. We can increase its exposure by one stop to get a better exposed render. And now we have a fairly basic lighting. We actually want to map a texture onto the dome light. That's the whole point of having a dome light. So click on this browse button for the dome map path. And in your text folder, you can find this HDRIs folder. I have a bunch of HDRIs from hdrihaven.com, a great resource for free HDRIs. Make sure to go to their website and support them by donating. They have tons of high quality free HDRIs and backplates. For now, let's load this dry field HDRI. And now we are using the color information of that texture to let our scene. And as we are in ACES, make sure our color space for the texture is set to linear sRGB. You can see the combination of dome light and HDRI textures will result in an effortless, extremely realistic lighting. Imagine there are hundreds of free HDRIs on the web, each with different attributes and color information, and each one will result in a different lighting. We'll try a few different HDRIs later on. Before that, let's learn a few basic things about dome light. First, you probably want to rotate your HDRI around to get different looks, and you can achieve that by simply rotating the dome light in the viewport. And because this particular HDRI image has a shining sun, we can control how that sun will affect our scene and the direction of the shadows. You can also flip the HDRI map horizontally by enabling this flip checkbox in the dome light options. Let's do that and set the rotation on H to around 10 degrees to get this nice shadows and a clear sky in the background. To control the overall intensity and brightness of the dome light, you can use the exposure or intensity values like the other light types. Let's use exposure here. Let's try negative one, zero, one, two, and three. Let's get back to one as it gives us a well-exposed render. Now we can get out of our main camera and move around in the scene to get a better feel about how uh, the HDRI image is being mapped onto the dome light. Let's look around here. You can see pretty amazing. Now let's get back to the camera again. 
This map type dropdown is fairly important. Make sure the mapping type is correct. Different HDR images might come in different mapping types, angular, cubic, spherical, or mirrored ball. This one has a spherical mapping method, so that is what we will use. There are also some basic color correction options here available, like gamma, hue, and saturation. You can also tint your loaded HDRI image with a color. If you don't want to see the dome light or the texture itself in the background of your scene, you can simply uncheck this enable background under this environment section. You notice the dome light still affects the lighting, but it's no longer visible in the background. Let's make sure that's not the case for now. We have this alpha channel replace checkbox. By default, it's disabled, and that means the dome light affects the alpha channel. In the render view, if I select the alpha channel by clicking this button here, you can see the dome light is contributing to the alpha channel. But if we enable alpha channel replace, now you can see the light is not contributing to the alpha channel. And we can control how much we want our dome light to affect the alpha channel using this alpha value. For now, let's disable it and get back to our RGB render. Finally, using this backplate section, you can define a separate background image while still having the defined HDRI map affecting the lighting. Basically, you can render a custom backplate texture as your scene background instead of the dome light. Let's enable it and try a few backplate images. Obviously, the picture you choose here needs to match with the lighting from the HDRI map and some HDRI map come with their own backplate images, which can be very, very useful. And then there are some basic color correction parameters for the backplate. Uh, you can try them here. We talk more about backplates, HDRIs, and integrating 3D geometries onto HDRIs later on in the material and shading section of the course. For now, this should be enough. Let's turn off uh, this backplate and get back to our plain old simple HDRI map. While we are here, let's try a few other HDRI maps to see how just changing the HDRI map can give you a completely different lighting and feel. Let me just duplicate the current dome light and disable the first one for now. And we can load this wasteland clouds HDRI for this dome light. We can zero out its exposure and set its orientation to 105 degrees. And as you see, this will result in a completely different lighting. Let's create a duplicate again. Disable the previous one and this time load this Sky Sunset HDRI. Set its exposure to 1.5 and rotation to 55 degrees. Now we get this darker close to sunset or sunrise lighting, which is amazing. Let's make one final copy, disable the previous one, and this time load this Moonless Golf HDRI and set the exposure for this one to around zero and rotation to 130 degrees. And now we get this beautiful nighttime render. So you can see the power of dome light in combination with different HDRI images. Beautiful, realistic, effortless lighting. For now, let's disable this one and enable our first dome light and let's go for a quick final render. I'm gonna open up the render settings and make sure the resolution is around 
1152 by 1200 pixel. Come down to the Redshift render settings and change the mode to basic for now. And let's increase the bucket quality to high and make sure the noising is enabled and change the engine to Alto single, which is a bit more accurate and production proven compared to Nvidia Optics, albeit slower and it is also not real time uh, and will be applied after the render. So let's render the scene in the render view and see what we get. So here is our render. I have already rendered a few of the dome lights. Let me just go ahead and show you the final renders. Nice renders. Now, you don't have to use dome lights only for exterior shots. There are tons of HDR images taken from interiors that can be used with any types of scenes. And as we go through the course, you notice I tend to use them with all types of scene. They are extremely robust and powerful, so they can be used in every situation. Great. So in this lesson, we learned about Redshift dome light. See you in the next video. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.